Welcome to the Eclipse Ultimate Cockpit Movie about a super classic 1956 built Convair 580 aircraft of Nolinor Aviation. Right now you see the operating main base of Nolinor Aviation at Montreal's Mirabel Airport with the entire Convair 580 fleet resting at the apron in fall 2019. Due to new regulation requirements getting into force early 2020, unfortunately Nolinor Aviation is forced to retire its fleet that it operated for decades and that has been the backbone of the operations for many many years. Saying that, Passenger aircraft of Convair 580 will very soon disappear from the skies all around the world. At that point in time there were only two operators worldwide that still had the passenger version in operations, which were Nolinor Aviation and Air Chathams down in New Zealand. Today Nolinor Aviation invites you for a ride all the way from Winnipeg up to Churchill with polar bear spectators on a combi passenger and cargo mission. You have the rare chance to capture the beauty of this wonderful aircraft. Our ride today is on a Convair 580 that has been built in 1956 and was originally delivered to Braniff Airways. In other words, when you will be boarding the aircraft today, it is more than 63 years of age, but still going strong. In a moment we will meet our today's crew in Winnipeg. Actually, our flight will take place tomorrow and we are meeting the day before. The reason is that we have bad weather kicking in. In 2019 there was already a snowstorm visiting Winnipeg in early October right in the morning of our convoy departure. For that reason the crew has decided to do a run up the day before since the aircraft was resting for a while to make sure that all the systems run well. And they are gonna invite you as well not only to witness the flight but also to be on board of the run-up. And as a little extra, since in the morning it will be dark and snowing and it might be difficult to show you the full walk around of the Convair 580, First Officer André is so kind to give you an extra walk around the day before to show you all the beautiful details of this lovely aircraft. Hi uh, Aircliffs fan, welcome uh, to Winnipeg today. We uh, uh, we will invite you on the Convair 580, just back there. It's a passenger aircraft. It's one of the last one remaining. It's going to be retired uh, in a few months. Uh, so you will have the chance, uh, the opportunity to, uh, to fly with us on one of the last uh, flying passenger uh, Convair aircraft in the world. Um, our company has uh, three of them and it's, we've been operating them for maybe 27 years, I think so and uh, it's going to be uh, retired next month so uh, you are very lucky uh, it's uh, Nolinor was founded in 1992 it's been uh, flying for 27 years and this aircraft has been the backbone of the company for all this time uh, we we used to have seven of them and uh, only three now are still flying today we have uh, one cargo and two passengers left so uh, we are in Winnipeg, Manitoba, in the center of Canada, and um, winter is on, is, uh, on, on the doorstep. Uh, it's getting cold, so today uh, the aircraft hasn't been flying for a little while, so today we will be um, testing the engines, we'll do a run-up and a walk around with you guys, so uh, we will present you the aircraft. And uh, my name is Steve Coulomb, I'll be assisted by uh, the first officer André Vanier and the flight engineer Vincent Perrault. Uh, myself, I've been flying for Nolenor uh, for about nine years, and I used to be a mechanic before for four years. So uh, I've been here for 13 years. Uh, so it's about a third of my life I've been spending with Nolenor. <laughs> Hi, everybody, uh, and uh, Airclips uh, fans. Uh, my name is Andre, and uh, I'm happy to, to be here. Um, like uh, Steve, I'm flying the, the, the fantastic Convert 580. And I'm, I'm very happy to, to be here to fly the, the last uh, passenger flight uh, with Nolinor. I'm uh, from, from Nolinor Science uh, five years and I'm a sheet metal technician too, so I do dual job. So I'm, uh, I'm uh, particularly uh, happy about that. Hey, I'm Vincent, the mechanic. Uh, so my job, my role is to uh, make sure the plane is uh, serviceable, ready to fly uh, every day. The schedule uh, can change uh, very quick. And uh, right now we're doing a 
some flights uh, to go up north in Churchill. Because of the bears, uh, Churchill is known as the capital of the polar bear uh, uh, observation in the world. So every year in October and November, we are bringing passengers over there to uh, witness the polar bears. Just before the ice forms on the Hudson Bay, uh, the, the polar bears gather around the bay and we bring people to uh, witness them. So uh, that's why we are flying there uh, today, well, tomorrow. And uh, we, so we are preparing the aircraft. Vincent makes sure that the aircraft is ready, airworthy. And right now the aircraft is configured in 32 passengers configuration. We're going to have cargo in the front uh, bring it because we have to bring supplies up there. Because the Churchill doesn't have a road. It only has like a railway that, uh, that gives, can carry supplies or the, the lifeline out of the town is only a railway or uh, by uh, maritime uh, also there's a port, but it's only available for a short period of time uh, during the year. Like right now, the winter is coming, so the line is gonna be cut. Uh, and uh, Vincent is also taking care of, uh, he's gonna take care of the luggage or the fuel, refueling the aircraft. Our aircraft was delivered to Braniff International Airways, and then it was passed on to Allegheny Airlines, Great Lakes Airlines, and Great Northern Airlines, all in the United States. Then the aircraft has been converted from a piston prop equipped classic Convair 440, which it originally was, into a more modern turboprop version, Convair 580, with new engines, an extended nose, a new tail, and some other more details. Then in the year 19. 1980 it made its way to South Africa to Air Cape where it stayed for four years before going on to Canada already with its today's registration. There it was going back and forth between Air Ontario and Can Air Cargo for a couple of times until finally it landed in the fleet of Nolinor Aviation in 1998. Hi everybody, hi Heraclitz fan, I'm Andre again and we are ready to, to make a, a detailed walk around together. The temperature is uh, very cold at Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. So we will prepare, like tomorrow morning, the, the walk around for the flight uh, North North 890. So uh, I start all the time I walk around, I check the pillow the pito heater and the, the pillow cover is not there so everything is fine over here and I will watch the nose of the aircraft damage or everything else and I will go to the nose gear right now so the first thing I will remove the the gear pin I put over there and I watch uh, the oil accumulator pressure we have to need uh, 1000 psi for the accumulator so uh, it's all right for this uh, we are here an emergency air bottle so uh, the the gauge is inside of the cockpit uh, the side the captain side of the cockpit so the bottle is here and uh, everything leakage uh, of the nose gear is fine general condition spring we have the strut for the nose gear the nose gear so we check everything is fine taxi light actuator no leak no oil leak for the actuator uh, general condition for the tire you can see the the twin here two tire two uh, the worn of uh, the tire the scissor of the, the nose wheel is important because we have here uh, a pin so we can, we can separate this part. So be sure the, the pin is very through the part over here. So I look closely if it's, it's okay. Fine. And we have a particularity of uh, the aircraft is the cable over here. It's control the hydraulic system here, so we check if the cable is uh, a good condition, so it's fine. All right, and uh, you can see the general condition of the, the, the nose, uh, the nose wheel. Uh, and uh, okay, we will continue. External power closed. We can see the pitot 
the other side, the right side of the airplane, so the cover is removed. And uh, we can check the door over here is flush of the skin, position lock, so everything is fine here. We can check to the uh, antenna of the aircraft. So just one here and just one here. Everything is fine. And we pass for the cargo door. Once, one, once again, we can see the, 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 the door is flush of the skin and it's position locked. Every time, every time I will open the door to see if uh, the net is, uh, in, is in position. So presently Vincent put uh, the rudder block and he will uh, install the, the net again. All right. So leading edge, the big nacelle of the engines, we check for the whole oil leak. We can see the big propeller of this aircraft is a fantastic big propeller. So it's a aerial product, four blades steel, stainless steel blade, and it's full feathering and reversing propeller. It's a 1,000 pounds for this this propeller and uh, it's almost well it's 13 feet diameter so it's very very big it's a huge propeller so look at that it's a big blade and we can talk about the engine it's allison 501-d15 it's a big turbo engine almost 4000 hp horsepower for this engine and uh, it's turned at approximately 13 uh, 13 820 rpm so the blade so we will turn approximately around 1020 rpm so the gearbox do a big big job on this kind of engine so I will check the, the propeller is low pitch, screw is over there, no screw missing around the propeller here, inlet, plugs out is removed, cover here is closed and we will take a look of, uh, inside here, remove the, the, uh, the uh, gear pin again. And we can check the particularity, the, the particularity of the uh, place here is the spring over here. We have seven springs, so we have to check that. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. How everything is there. The whole check is over there, and we have an EC pump inside. I don't know if you can see. It's dark a little bit, but you can see uh, around the, the, the engine nacelle. So we can check again the general condition of the tire, the strut of the main gear, and uh, the cylinder, the retraction cylinder, if we have a oil leak, it will leak, it leak. So presently it's perfect. The wheel well is clean and it's fantastic. Okay, so uh, well on the, the right side of the engine. So. One more time, I check for the, the screw. Everything is over there. No oil leak. And on this engine, fans, look at that. It's very special. It's a EG, uh, EDC, it's a exhaust gas tam turbine. So this is a small turbine beside the big one. Is it's around uh, 200 pounds of turbine and is a rate of 250 horsepower turbine and is delivering uh, airflow for the engine start for uh, approximately 30 psi of pressure so we need this little turbine to start the whole engine so it's very special on this kind of aircraft. 
very special. We will we will start the uh, the GTC uh, in the few minutes, so you will see that. Okay, man, you will check the leading edge for the damage, taxi light, landing light, fuel cap cover. We have here a fuel panel inspection, so we will check for the leak. We have a few fuel panel. Uh, uh, under the the wings so we can see that over here yeah, the fuel uh, stick is over there no leak and we can continue for the leading edge no damage and the wing tip is perfect no damage the landing light now you know you see the, the that nav light is open now so the GTC uh, the GPU is uh, is uh, connected now so we can see the static weak aileron so the alignment is perfect no damage we can see here the flaps once again the alignment of the uh, the wings is perfect very good no damage under the flaps and we can see here the turbine outlet so we check the alignment of the the exhaust pipe inside of the turbine so it's it's important to check that and one more time we can check the oil leak the general condition of the landing gear so inflation of the tire brake brake line everything is fine now we can go over here this is the air conditioning uh, air duct so we check inside to see we have uh, a foreign object inside here and inside here so everything is fine so we can check now the system the bottle for the extinguishers we have inside over here two bottles for the extinguisher system so the first one is the, the main and the second is the reserve so we check the pressure for the bottle so it's perfect over 50 100 psi we will close and now we can check the beacon lights usually the ground power is on so now it's closed the beacon is turning and light is offshore so presently it's off but tomorrow morning it will be turn and lights all right outflow valve we have two outflow valve and safety valve so we will check we we'll bump a little bit a skin and we will check if this the, the 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 valve is thick so we will sound we will, we will hear the sound and we can hear the sound the, the safety valve is is open so it's not sticky all right we'll continue we check the skin this is a service service door for the toilets so it's fine it's closed perfect the door again is closed and it's flush to the skin so no damage the horizontal uh, stabilizer at the leading edge is fine you can see the, the few patch on the leading edge it's, it's inter interesting because you can see the aircraft is is a very old aircraft is 1956 so we have a, a lot of history about this aircraft i think so so you can see the patch on this aircraft it's very it's very funny to to look that it's a nice patch all right we can see the elevator static weak again is it's over there the trim tab the big trim tab is aligned with the elevator so it's fine we can see the navigation lights on the tail over here and we can see the uh, vertical uh, stabilizer and uh, rudder 
of the aircraft. And again, we can see the big uh, drill tab for the, the rudder. And uh, everything is fine here. No damage, everything is aligned. No rudder block or control lock to block the rudder for the wind. So the Vincent removed the, the rudder block. Uh, we can see again the other door flush, no damage, lock position, very fine. And we have the safety valve. Again, the other valve. Well, we'll bump a little bit on the skin and we can hear the sound, the typical sound for the, the valve. It's not sticky, so it's perfect, it's working. <laughs> All right, uh, beacon lights is done. We have another side, the right side for the extinguisher and we have the left side. So we'll check the two bottles of the right side. We'll open the access panel. Pretty windy, it's cold. Okay, so we have the same, like the, la the, the right side, we have two bottles. It's for the, the, the left engine extinguisher bottle. Uh, it's a, I think it's a allant in, in, uh, in English. I think so, it's the same English, French, allant. So we can check the pressure, 500 minimum. It's perfect, so we can close. Okay, we in this airplane, fans, look at that. We have a, a access battery. is a is a special device, but it, it's like that. Maybe in 1950, 50s, we can use this little handle to rise or put the batteries disconnect from the aircraft. So I will show you a little bit. So look at that, I can, I can disconnect the, the battery for, uh, for the, the, the aircraft and when I rise the battery, I will connect all the system for the aircraft. So presently the, the aircraft, the battery is on, on the aircraft. So I will check for that. I will put the safety pin, close the access panel, whoop. And everything is fine. This is the GPU access. So no big deal for that. All right, the same. Check the, the big, the big flaps. And this is the part of the, the, the flaps over here. So it's a big flaps. And right there, just over there. Turbine inlet, uh, turbine uh, pipe. The exhaust pipe, you can check. The alignment, everything is fine. General condition of the tire again. Wear, strut, brake, no hydraulic fluid link. So it's perfect. All right. And okay, flaps, aileron, static weak. And one more time, we will check the navigation light now is closed because we don't have any more the gpu okay we will check again leading edge no damage taxi light fuel cap and one more time the access inspection panel no leaks for the the fuel we have four. All right, for that. Uh, tomorrow morning, the lights for the wing will be open. This will be the real walk around tomorrow morning. But now it's a, it's a, it's a extra, extra movie for you guys. The light over there is will light the, the leading edge for the icing. So we can check if we have some ice on the uh, on the leading edge so habitually is open we have uh, the trap over there we can check if it's open it's for the for the engine and one more time blade low pitch screw over there no missing screw 
plugs removed, no oil leaks, and gear pin. Gear pin removed, spring on the system, seven spring, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, everything is there, all check, and it is particularly for this kind of aircraft, we have a nitrogen bottle. It's for open the starter and a few valve inside of the aircraft. So we have two bottles over here. It's important to be open to start the engine. So we will, you will see that tomorrow when we will start the engine or for the run up uh, next. So I will open it, check the pressure. I can see the pressure, we have 1000 PSI, it's perfect, we have two, so we have to check bolt, it's open. So we are ready to start the engine now with the nitrogen bottom. That's the particularity of, the, uh, of this kind of the engine, of the, the aircraft too. So we are almost finished, we will check the other side, check the engine nacelle, oil leak, screw over there this is the important thing when i said the screw is over there no screw missing and this is the air scoop for the ventilation inside of the cabin check no foreign object leading edge skin of the fuselage and this is the 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 the, 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 the door for the uh, the air stair so we check this is closed. Sorry for the wind. It's a wind, windy day and it's a north operation, so very wind today. So it's supposed to be closed over here. I will close. All right, fine. So now it's finished for the walk around. We go inside for the flow to uh, the pre-flight check. So we will prepare the machine to start the engine and go for the run up. So next, uh, we see you next inside of the cockpit, uh, Airclips fan. See you later. Well, so folks, now we are back on the inside the aircraft. Andre has finished uh, the walk around. Uh, so we are preparing the aircraft. Uh, we will do the, all the checks for, uh, for our run up that we have to do today. Weather as uh, situation has decreased. Now it's raining, uh, some, uh, some fog in the area. And we'll have to taxi. We'll have to uh, taxi away from on the airport because we have to do a power run. Uh, our mechanic just finished, uh, closed the door. And now uh, we will do all our checks. So uh, all right, I'm good. looking at the, 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 all the, sir, the circuit breakers are in. On the left, on the right. That's the essential bus. We have two DC bus on this aircraft. You have the essential bus and the non-essential bus. All breakers are in. And uh, then uh, we proceed with our, our checks. Okay. So what I just turned on is the inverter. It's uh, converting DC power to AC power, so uh, we can supply a pow uh, AC power to the instruments that require it. Okay, that's we'll the inverter open. switch here. Oh, we have the AC right. panel here, the DC panel. Uh, above here is mostly the engine and propeller uh, panel. And uh, you have the fuel panel over here. Everything seems to be set now. Fire detector is here, see that sign, sky track for uh, communication with uh, the main base. I'll test the TCAS system. Failed. It failed because it didn't have time to warm up. We'll test it again a little later. Uh, down here we have the hydraulic bypass. We have the trims here, the rudder and aileron trims. I test all the way to the right and all the way to the left. 
Oxygen uh, sy system, uh, Steve, we will check. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I'll check that on my side a little later. Okay, good. The gear lever is here, and then we have the flaps going down, going up. It's a little toggle switch on this aircraft. The AC pump, AC hydraulic pump, autopilot uh, control head is here. And that's the elevator trim. Uh, I hear uh, I hear you. Five on five. Over here it's the weather radar. And that's the fire emergency panel here. We have the right left hand, right hand emergency handle. In case if something goes wrong, we pull that handle and it's gonna isolate the uh, the engine from the rest of the aircraft. And we have the two uh, the three fire zones each side. The GPWS I just test. Right, Here pull. we have the GPS. Pull up. Terrain, terrain, pull up. And I'm gonna test my auto mask and then I'll be ready for the checklist. Yes. Okay, okay now it's okay. I hear you, uh, Steve. Okay. So I'll set. Uh, so uh, pre-flight checklist, please, Andre. Okay, pre-flight checklist. Pin cover and plugs. So uh, they are aboard. I think uh, we have two pitot covers and the three gear pins are back there. Can you open your auto mask? I'm not sure I opened it. Okay, and it's clear on the left. Yeah. Also. Okay, circuit breaker. I'll check. So oxygen says in smoke mask. So check left. Open and check right. Uh, cabin pressure panel set. Hydraulic quantity is a uh, check. Emergency gear release, brake valve and pressure. Off, off and uh, 2000. Check. Uh, we are at 2300. Fuel panel is a uh, check. NTS and fairer bottoms is uh, tested out. Tark meter on. All cooler door auto. Power panel E handles. Check in. Gear lever. Three green. And a pin. Hydraulic bypass. Down. Reject takeoff and proper respeed briefing. Well, uh, I cannot any failure which affect the safety of the flight. If we have a failure part to run, I can reject or continue. If I can reject, I will simultaneously close the power lever, apply maximum with brakes, maximum reverse, consistent with the condition, you will. I will as apply a slight forward pressure on the control column, retract the flaps and call ATC. In the event of proper speed before V1, you will? I will identify and handle the applicable engine on your command of reject. If I can continue, the action below, uh, Flap protection that's it, except to silence a fire warning bell here. Check. And or confirm the auto feather, either with the lights, the auto feather lights, or the RPM. So that, that's a briefing for uh, for flying. Yeah. We are just doing a run up today, <laughs> but uh, just uh, to show you what it's going to well, look like. Yeah. Okay. So, so we're done. Pre flight checklist? Pre flight checklist complete. Okay. So. Ready for GTC. Okay. We have signal. We can start on engine number three. Here we go. Fuel pump. GTC run up switch on s run and check start. Okay, so we have green light. Okay, before start checklist. Before start checklist. Okay, tail post. Not install. Door and windows. Uh, they are all closed, lights out. Seat belt sign, emergency lights. Uh, it's uh, on an arm. Parking brake. Set. Cabin pressure panel, see, set. Fuel and oil quantity. So uh, it's enough. We have almost uh, 3,500 pounds of fuel. 
over here, fueling yeah. uh, quantity indicator, and the oils are good. We have a uh, four and four. Okay, has pair will well. RPM and sync. Are low and center. Power lever, Vendor and fuel cap. Let's start, open and cap left. Open and cap right. Order and aileron trim. Three and zero. Flight instrument heading and altimeter. Heller, uh, altima heading 309 and altimeter is. Uh, I don't know if you got the address. It must be something like 29 or 89. Okay, check right. Altitude alert. Uh, we don't mind. Uh, yeah, it's just a run. Nice. Two go. Standby horizon. It's on. AC pump. It's on. Performance. Uh, we, we don't care. It's a run. Okay, so taxi and takeoff briefing. Uh, so we're, uh, we're going to taxi from here, uh, Winnipeg, on April 2. And we will taxi probably on the right on Charlie, uh, all the way on the runway, we assume. Uh, yeah. And we are going here on the northwest side. It's going to be on the about the threshold of runway 13. Okay. No, no question. We will see that. Stardom switch on start and beacon lights on before start checklist complete. Okay, we have signal for engine number two. It's clear on the right. Clear right. Start to engage. Okay, GPU is being disconnected. I confirm that uh, the TRU is working well. Now we are waiting for the GPU to be removed and we'll be able to start the left hand engine. Alright. Okay, we have the signal. Okay. Are you guys clear? Starting number one. Ready. Clear left, start engage. Stable. Engine stable. So uh, yeah, we'll cycle. just uh, check the flaps. Uh, so bring the flaps to flaps 40 and then bring them flaps, flaps up 40. again. Yep. Okay, check. All the way 40, confirm it's fine, and then uh, up, and then we'll do the before taxi checking. So okay, check. Oh. How come we don't have left and this engine? Flaps 40, Steve. Okay, problem solved. Flaps up. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. And flaps on. Okay. Before taxi checklist. Before before taxi. Stabilizer trim. At zero. AC and DC panel. It's all check. Cabin pressure. Oh, uh, you can leave it to. Uh, it's freezing out it's there. We will be freezing inside too. Out. Yeah. Out. out. That's fine. Okay. Start and switch on normal. Hydraulic pressure check. Uh, through 2,800. Hydraulic pressure check. Pitot and Nissa. We don't care. We don't care. Door warning. Uh, it's uh, check lights out. Auto feather. Uh, we don't care. And ground equipment. Okay. It's clear left. Clear right. Okay. Before taxi checklist complete. 
So uh, we can contact the ground. Uh, we are ready to taxi for uh, for the ground. The threshold uh, yeah. one three. We are Quebec Hotel Bra. Okay. Sure. And we take uh, round uh, the morning. Not in our uh, Quebec Hotel Bravo at Kelly Western ready to taxi. Quebec Hotel Bravo ground hold short of Charlie. Hold short for Charlie and uh, Quebec Hotel. Okay, it's clear, right? Okay, clear, right. I have the Nolinor in my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hard to get out there. Very windy today. Yeah. yeah. I can feel it on the tiller. What, 15 knots, uh, Steve? Yeah, at the winds? At least? Oh, it's uh, 20 gusting 30, I think. Oh. Yeah. A very interesting feature of this aircraft is are the hydraulic wipers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have a knob here and I can adjust the, the speed of the wipers as much as I want. Yeah. And it's super quiet. That's the best. We really love it. Yeah, sure. So, um, Raisa, what is this run-up about? Uh, it's confidence uh, check. Make sure uh, the engine is uh, running uh, normal and it reaches its uh, full power. Okay, so it's a kind of a performance uh, run-up. It's on the left-hand engine, I think, huh? Yeah. Okay. So we'll put uh, ourselves into the wind, just over there on the on the area and uh, then we'll put the parking brake and uh, we will test uh, left hand engine. We'll put maybe a thousand horsepower on right hand engine just to balance and then we'll put full power on left hand engine. Mr. Sanchez Pierre, perfect. Okay, nose into the wind should be around like that. I think the winds were like 350, 360 almost. Yeah, almost yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, nose wheel is straight, parking brake is set. Okay, so we are shifting the engines to their operational speed, 13,820 RPM. We have two speed on those engines. Uh, now we are in high speed run idle. Uh, all the metal uh, tires are working properly, all power is fine. The hydraulic is good, uh, Andre? Primitive, uh, 3000 psi. Okay, so I'll remove the gas lock. Check. Yeah, which holds the controls uh, lock for the wheels, and we will advance the power level. So 1700 on the right, and then we'll reach full power on the left. That's a warning for takeoff because we don't have the flaps extended. Okay, so we have 1,700 on the right, and then full power on the left. So, I'm at 60, I have 3,700 HP. to you. Back to the better range. 
just make another quick check. Downshift, on shift number two. Okay, guard number two. Engine stable, number one. Engine stable. Okay. So uh, now I think we are done. I don't yeah. have anything else to do. No, yeah, we're fine with that. Yeah. Okay, we we'll engage the gas lock. Here we go. And uh, so we can ask uh, the ground to uh, go back to Kelly Western. Kelly Western. All right. Good. And uh, Winnipeg Ground and Quebec Motel, but we are finished uh, with uh, the run up. We are ready to return to Kilo Western. Quebec Hotel Bravo Ground, Roger, taxi on the runway 13, short runway 36. Taxi uh, runway 13, all short 36, uh, Quebec Hotel Bravo. Okay, you can do the afternoon thing now. Okay, same again, tap trim. Uh, just the uh, after landing. Uh, after landing, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's mainly, I think, the fuel pumps and the external power. Okay, so we taxi on way one three. Clear left. Clear right. Hold on only three six. Yeah, three six. Maybe mm -hmm. we can test the EDC because uh, there is some fog now inside the aircraft. You can turn on the EDC. EDC, check. Yeah, which is the engine driven uh, compressor okay. supplying us with uh, fresh air. But it, as it's very fresh today, we don't want to use it much. <laughs> there we go. Thanks. Yeah, this aircraft is pressurized by uh, an engine driven compressor. It's not bleed air like uh, the, the new aircraft, the next generation, uh, the jets, and all that. It's really an accessory driven by the engine to supply uh, air to pressurize the cabin. Yeah, that's the plane coming to our spot. Huh? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, probably. Right, then Delta they are. connection. Yeah, probably. Uh, the, the guys are there. Yeah, 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 yeah they yeah, will. Yeah. Uh, they will welcome us.
Parking brake set, shut down. Shut down. Radar. Uh, it's a standby. Captain, pressure panel, rag on. Parking brake. Set. RPM. Low. NTS test. Hot. Fuel and ignition. Off. Heater. It's all off. Inverter. Soon off at 2200 RPMs. Beacon lights off. And start on switch. Disarm. Shutdown checklist complete. Fuel flow, ADC, disconnect circuit breaker. It's uh, off, off. Okay, nacelle, van door. Closing. And battery and brakes. Soon off. So, I hope you enjoyed the ride. Yep. So, uh, the aircraft is, uh, is fit to fly. We've just tested yep. everything. The engines are fine. And also, we just the GPS. So, uh, meet us tomorrow for the flight to Churchill. Oh, yes. <laughs>so uh, good morning guys so we're back uh, to the fly, uh, flight planning room the, it's the d-day today we are going to uh, churchill mentoga uh, mentoba we are bringing the passengers uh, to uh, witness the polar bears in uh, so in churchill area we have uh, this morning uh, 30 passengers on the way in on the way up and uh, it's we're gonna have nine passengers on the way back with uh, plenty of cargo in the cabin as you will see inside the aircraft uh, Weather is, uh, well, we are real Canadian weather, you're lucky this morning. It's uh, f kind of uh, rain and snow mixed all together, so we're going to have to de-ice the aircraft. Um, and uh, we're going to have pretty strong winds up. It's going to be our 45 minutes flight uh, because of uh, most uh, like 60 knots of tailwind all the way up. And um, that's it about that. And on the way back, it's going to be way longer, like 2 hours, 30 minutes because of the winds. And uh, yeah, that's it, the passengers. And, so. and uh, for the rest of the weather, over there in Churchill, where the forecast is about, uh, uh, we have winds from the west, pretty strong winds, uh, about 15 gusting, 25 knots. The alternate Thompson sounds good, sound uh, yeah, pretty solid. Uh, VFR weather, so that's nice. And uh, about that, uh, we are looking at the NOTAMs. Do you have any relevant NOTAMs? Uh, uh, yes, right? Steve, I have uh, one. It's uh, uh, the VOR is on monitor uh, at, uh, yeah. at Winnipeg, yeah. 115 decimal 5, and uh, we don't have uh, any NDB. The NDB is US. Oh. So yeah, well, we that's don't use it much for Church, uh, that, uh, for Winnipeg and Churchill. Everything is fine. Runway 17. 25 is closed. Yeah, yeah, it's been live for uh, that. No ILS and yeah. no PAPI. We have two runways uh, in Churchill. Uh, yeah. 0725 is the short gravel one, but the very long, uh, like 9200 uh, uh, paved one is open yeah. as usual. And and so uh, uh, I noticed uh, something else about uh, Rankin. Rankin uh, no VOR. Oh, okay, but we are not VOR is We US. should not go there. Our no, alternate is Thompson. So a small place. Rankin yeah. is way more yeah. up north. We, it's just uh, another airport in the area. It, uh, that is a, a, an important hub, but we won't go there. Yeah. Okay. Everything is fine. Sounds good. good yeah, Everything yeah. is fine. Yes. Uh, let's go to so the plane. Here we go. <laughs> Perfect Canadian water. So right now they are uh, loading the aircraft with the cargo 
and uh, Andre will proceed with the morning walk around like he did yesterday but uh, it was better to film yesterday yeah this morning is not very pleasant You can see we have some snow sneaking on the uh, on the wings and on the props. So and the propeller you too. You to can see. Mm. I look the propeller. Yeah. Good morning, Vincent. Go. What? Go. Go. No, okay, I'm going to zoom. Okay, here we go for the real one, fans. So uh, I will do the same of last uh, yesterday. So here we go. Uh, thank you, Vanessa. <laughs> on the cockpit I'm uh, so I'm I'm starting with the cockpit checks so I'm checking every uh, every switch every panels uh, we have the de-icing panel for the the propellers and the cuffs here the AC uh, AC power supply panel the DC power supply panel uh, most of the uh, engines uh, uh, relevant switch are here up here here we have the sat phone TCAS uh, CVR recorder um, fire detector in the cabin uh, this is a co-pilot uh, de-icing panel. Here we, we have the P2E, the, the, also the wings, uh, the anti-ice panel. Over here the GPS. Uh, we have the trim. So now I'm looking at the trims down here, the roll and, uh, yeah. the roll and rudder trims. All the way each side. Make sure everything is fine. And goes back to zero. 
Uh, this one is hard to see. So uh, here's the hydraulic bypass. I'm going to talk later about the hydraulic. It's uh, special on this aircraft. Autopilot here. The flaps. The flaps work fine. AC hydraulic pump. Uh, autopilot control head. Oh, this is the flight attendant calling to make sure the uh, uh, the PA works and the intercom. Why is this thing? Ah, ça ça, Et le PA, c'est bon? Merci. Okay, so the, the intercom works well and uh, the PA. Before start. Before start, tail pose. No, it's not. Door and windows. Close lights up. Seat belt sign, emergency lights. C'est uh, uh, Vincent, peux-tu m'aider avec ma ceinture? Uh, C'est on and arm. Parking brake. C'est set. Cabin pressure panel set 21,000 feet. Fuel and oil quantity. Uh, suffisant. Well, we have uh, 2,000, 10,500 and uh, 3 and 4 for the, the oils. Asper wheel well, RPM sync. No, center. Power lever, van door and fuel cap. Start open and cap left. Open and cap right. With the snow, it's uh, a little bit more difficult. Okay. Rudder and aileron trim. Three and zero. Flight instrument, heading and altimeter. Heading uh, uh, 310, altimeter uh, 3000, uh, 3000 huh? you said? Yeah, 3000, 3000. Yeah. Okay, check right, altitude alert. Uh, 3000 feet for the sit. Stand by horizon. On. AC pump. On. Performance. Review. Tax intercom briefing. Complete. And start and switch on start and beacon lights. On before start checklist complete. Okay, we signal for number two. It's clear on the right. Clear right. Start and engage. Rotation. Time. Power section. Gearbox. Compressor light out. Primary light on. Light off. Fuel flow. Five thousand RPM. All pressure check. Eight thousand start to get out. Primary light off. Uh, Engine stable, stable carat water. Disconnect. Okay, twelve forty. Yesterday it was uh, spring, today it's winter. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Big change.
Iceman, uh, good morning. This is uh, Nolan 0890. Well, no, I'm just going to get you to uh, stand by. Uh, this morning, uh, Steve, we'll put uh, zip 4, I think so. Yeah, type yeah, 1 and 4. four. 1 and 4, right? And pad control, this is uh, Nolan 0890. Nolan 0890, pad control, go ahead. Yeah, so we are starting the, uh, the engine at the moment. We are at April 2 at Kelly Western. Uh, we should be there in about 5-10 uh, minutes for the ice. Roger, check the match, just call again, short of the pad. Roger, come on. Taxi yeah, we'll do that uh, once we uh, when we are over there, when we have time. Okay, good. My plan is to start the engine as soon as possible to prevent uh, snow accumulation on the plane. Alright, good. Welcome on board, Leonor. I mean, we will appreciate your attention during this safety demonstration as it outlines the safety features. Ready, sir, Brock. The English journey is hard looking near your safety Uh, I seem to have a problem with the GPU. Come on, guys, move away. <laughs> okay. Huh? We go for number one. Okay, good for number one. Here, Here we on go. the left. Start and engage. Except the Except flaps. The flaps. Yeah. Double trim. Uh, zero. Descent DC panel. Check. Cabin pressure auto. Bottom switch, normal. Hydraulic pressure, 2,900. Mikko on and left. Door warning. Check. Auto feather. Hard to realize. And ground equipment. Here we And clear right. Before taxi check is complete. And it's been one minute. We can turn on the GTC. Ladies and gentlemen from Flight Deck, your captain speaking. Welcome on board flight uh, 890. Uh, it's for us to uh, Churchill. Today our flight time is going to be 1 hour 45 minutes at an altitude of uh, 22,000 feet. It should be a pretty smooth flight for the first half of the flight. But thereafter, in, uh, when we get to the Churchill area, uh, we are ex expecting uh, strong winds. Uh, there's a low level jet uh, in the area, so uh, there might be some uh, turbulence over there. So maybe for the, uh, the last 45 minutes of the flight, I'm around. So. So on behalf of the aviation and Frontiers Note, uh, we uh, wish you a safe flight, uh, we wish you a pleasant flight, and uh, we invite you to sit down, relax, and enjoy the flight. Also, we will be the icing, as you will notice, uh, because of this, this morning, we'll be the uh, taxi to the, the icing pad. It should take a moment before we take off. Thanks for your patience. So, still waiting for the temperature to rise on the left engine. As soon as we have 20 degrees on the all the temperature, we can uh, taxi, we can move the power lever on the aircraft.
tell me when you have 20, Andre? Yeah, I'm ready. Oh. Yeah, I'm ready. 20, uh, Steve, ready? on the, okay. the left engine. Okay, reverse taxi. No big uh, ground, uh, good morning, Nolan R890 uh, at Kelly Western, ready to taxi for the de-icing pad. Nolan R890, ground taxi right on Charlie, cross from way 31, Hotel Sierra 2 Apron 1. Once you reach Apron 1, contact pad control 122.92. Nolan R891, uh, right on Charlie, cross from way 31, Hotel Sierra and 121.92. Uh, the de icing pad. Northern R890, uh, pad control is 122 decimal 9 or 2. 122 decimal 9 2, Roger, Northern R890. Okay, check right. Syria and we check for the next uh, traffic we will follow. Not an R890. Yeah, so we are just behind an RJ. Not an R890, you're going to see a uh, Air Canada Airbus um, on the north side of Apron 1. They'll be following you for the DAs. Okay, that's the RJ we are going to Oh, after. where? We yeah, have another have an one. You have an umbrella here and then we are after the Air Canada RJ. Okay, okay perfect. Okay, you have the traffic inside. But wor worst case, uh, Andre, you yes. can uh, crack open the window. Well, maybe, yeah. Worst case, yeah. this morning at the icing club. So what was uh, for breakfast this morning? Did you add bacon? I yeah. had bacon. No, yes. it was bacon day? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, nice, nice. Sorry about that, Vesa. You have to come too early. That's <laughs> the bacon. <laughs> it's gonna be shredded in salad. Uh, and we had uh, some kind of omelet, a cheese omelet. Yeah, know. yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Tomatoes and cheese and... Yeah. Well, turning the knife into the... <laughs> the wall. <laughs> I had McDonald's. I'm loving it. <laughs> okay, so it's going to be my takeoff. The weather here is yep. uh, well, it's still good. We have above half a mile for departure. Uh, Right now, 360, 21, 21 gusting, 26, three quarters of a mile. So visibility is good. Over there in Churchill. Winds 260, 12 gusting, 19, 15 mile visibility. 
minus one. Pretty good as well. Okay. Uh, we'll use a full takeoff power as uh, there is. Uh, we use uh, the icing fluid this morning, and also we need the ice on the aircraft. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be a flaps 15, a speed uh, 113, 114, 117, 145, 160. 160, yeah. Uh, the NCIS is going to be on for sure. No, uh, the, uh, the MEL is the overspeed indicator that yeah. is, uh, Kyber, yeah. is on the yeah, taxi route. Uh, uh, so we are going to taxi on the, the icing pan, and thereafter we're going to be uh, taxiing out uh, probably Hotel uh, Charlie Cross on Victory 1, and then Hotel Charlie Cross on Victory 6 for departure on Victory 6. Yes. Uh, next one I'm going to show is uh, very slippery, wet, contaminated by snow, so we taxi at a low speed. Departure is going to be the Sid uh, Winnipeg 1 departure, and uh, make this effective uh, nine, uh, F 25 uh, April. Yes, check. Position up to the 18,000 feet, the 100, that's combined 3,800. Jet aircraft from you, which is our case. The noise at the moment, we've been looking at it. There's nothing relevant on the way 36. Yes. And uh, the initial climb time uh, heading 005 as assigned for Major Sierra, so we've maintained 3,000 as assigned. It's in the uh, oh, yeah, system management system. Uh, no uh, specific note times, uh, we've checked that this morning. Nothing yeah. uh, very important. Yeah. And no specification of departure. But we, after the icing, we would put uh, put back the EDC and uh, lower the flaps. Lower the flaps, yeah. After yeah the, the that's why we have to go after the ice. Okay, good. Okay, uh, now the night and uh, zero, the icing bay number three, and we will confirm uh, configuration, parking brake, and, parking brake and configuration for the aircraft. I'm on mic this up. ADC uh, Raygon, uh, Steve? Yeah. Okay, Flacker. Flaps up. Okay. ADC so you made off. advisor uh, parking brake set, aircraft configured, and uh, type 1 and 4 wing with them. And the ICIC pad and LR890 parking brake set, uh, the aircraft is configured for the, uh, the IC. And we'll have uh, type ah. 1 and 4 wing as a tail on the LR890. Roger, Nolan Air 90, hold position, line of event, hold light at near 1 o'clock, EDS will start momentarily uh, with a Type 1 and 4 wings and tail. Sure. Hey, Vanessa, can you stop the heater, please? Yeah, maybe it's all, it's all right. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, start to be uh, very... Uh, oh, yeah. oh, you're lucky, huh? you're <laughs> right behind it, Yeah. right in front so of it. I right. feel a little cold, me. <laughs> Oh want to yeah. start it back again? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you can turn uh, <laughs> the heater. Yeah, that's our fabulous uh, heater. While we're on the ground, we can use that for uh, for keeping us uh, warm. Very warm. Uh, very important yeah. in the uh, northern area. <laughs> but we need DC power. Right now, it works pretty well on the ground. It's basically like a toaster with a fan behind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's toaster like supplies heat and the fan uh, phew, flowing the air inside the cockpit. Yeah, yeah. I love your comparison. Oh, that's ah. what it looks like. Ah, toaster. It's look at I <laughs> toaster. <laughs> toaster with a fan. And you'll be you'll be the, the toast. Yeah. And yeah. The, yeah. the food. You're medium br uh, brown. <laughs> and I'm still white. <laughs> Merci, uh, Vanessa. No, it's okay, one. Perfect. Oh, the the rated pan, yeah. Ah, Bernard, it's so long. Yeah. Two. No, nothing on me. Okay. Uh, I feel a little bit. Ah, uh, that's good. Oh, yeah, I can feel it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can kind of feel it in my arm, though. <laughs> Yeah, of course. I smell it as well. I smell the... The skin? The, 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 the toast. <laughs> yeah. The toast smell. The burnt dust. <laughs> of the clean uh, cockpit air. Oh, yes. I love that smell in the morning. Oh, 
Okay, it looks like they are finally starting to the ice ourselves. Yes. It's been about 45 minutes we start the engine and... Yeah. Uh, uh, at last. At least. Yeah, he's on my wing, he's on yours, so he's gonna start. Yes. Today. First he's starting with type 1 to remove the snow. And then after he's gonna put type 4 to prevent snow from uh, sticking the wings again. After. So type 1 is the red one and type 4 is the green one. Don't be afraid. No, don't Shoot be afraid. <laughs> okay, start. Start on this side? Yeah. Not mine. Okay. <laughs> Come on, baby, shoot it. Yeah. Shoot it. Show us what you got. The, the, oh, stuff, yeah. the stuff is clear, huh, Steve? Yeah, but it's like, uh, it's clear red. It's like oh, a little yeah. red. Oh, if, yeah. you keep, if you watch well, uh, oh, you, yeah. you, you'll see it's a little red. Okay, good. Yeah, it's a type one. Okay. It's been heated. Yes. And it's uh, only to remove the snow. Okay. Now we can see the snow is moving out, it's moving away from the wing. Very efficient. Oh yeah. They use a lot, huh? Yes. We 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 paid out by the litters, huh? So they they put a lot. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's for our safety too, so. Yeah. Better to put more than not enough. Oh no, no. Oh yeah, you put a lot maybe. Ah. So now, right now, it's half a mile, 4,000 RVR, uh, 1031, or 5,136. So it's it's well, uh, well, it's above half a mile. Basically. Half a mile, yeah. According to the RVR, so it's nice. Okay. No problem for the departure. Yes, good. Thirteen thirty-five for the, the type Start. four. We just started two, min two minutes ago. Thirteen thirty-five. Thirteen thirty-five. Yeah. So we can compute uh, here uh, our limit of time. Thirteen thirty-five plus thirty-five minutes and plus one hour ten minutes. Okay. So fourteen. Side, is he moving away? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can see more. I can see the guys now. Uh, see? Okay. What's that? Uh, my side is moving. Alright, good. She's gonna call us. Go on at 9 0 uh, pack and show. Yeah, go ahead for 9 0. Go on at 9 0, ADA inspection has been completed. ADA is with type 1 and ADA is with type 4 at 100%. Holdover time started at 3 5. All come in the prison are safe. Contact now 29. Thank you. Uh, okay. 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 Contact your ground on one. one. Okay. Okay. Uh, return on VHF one, Steve. And when you pick uh, ground on an R eight nine nine zero at the DDI signal, ready to taxi. Ground on eight nine zero, ground on way three six, altimeter three zero one one, taxi hotel, Charlie. Cross one eight three one, call tower on one one eight three point two hundred one eight three six. RVR value is one eight three six. Alpha two thousand six hundred. Bravo two thousand two hundred. Light strength five. Hey, Roger, no, no eight nine uh, zero. Clear to taxi hotel uh, Charlie Cross thirty one and more short one eight thirty six and one one eight uh, this motor one quarter down. Eight nine zero. Thank you. It is, it is Romeo. Uh, that's up to the latest weather. Clear enough. Okay, Roger. Thank you. Right. Okay, we made it. 
Okay. All right. So EDC uh, back on. Uh, and flaps, uh, flaps 15, 15 for flaps. Uh. Flaps 15, I take it. Cabin secure? Cabin secure. So we still have plenty of fuel. We are above uh, 1,000 uh, or minimum brake release fuel. Yeah, around 9,000. Uh. This adventure cost us about 1,500 pounds. Uh. is coming in and we'll be taking up their after call. Right. So the days. He's been clear to them, yeah? Right. I think that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's the, why the, the guys is there, yeah. They're going to wait there. Can't see anything. Winnipeg Tower, no, no, 8-9. GTC. Is off. Flaps. 15 confirmed. Confirmed. Little That's good. Is off. Flight like control wing inspection ready. Yep. Good about clean wing left. For top and right wing clean. Clear left for the runway. Clear right only. Clear right. Toss bond down. Tara. Landing light. On. RPM and engine bleed. It's I and close. Alternator. All light. And annunciator panel. We have six green lights and four gold. Before takeoff checklist complete. Four hundred thirty-six. Confirm thirty-six. I can't believe the birds are flying. In this <laughs> no. Yeah, the seagull just in front. Yeah, you can see. Her. <laughs> okay, so thirty-six block yeah. thirty-six. So, so fine. Headings are good. Come pass. Line up and wait. Dollar R890, contact Winnipeg departure on 210 airborne, wind 01015, gusting 25, clear takeoff runway 36. Clear to takeoff runway 36 and 121, takeoff to Dollar R890. Get the lights out. RPM stable. Set takeoff bar. Power set. 80 knots. I have you have control. You want? Rotate. Positive rate. Yeah. Flaps traction altitude. Flaps up. Flaps up. Time power after take up tricks. Big departure, good morning, LNR 890. Hello, what's it? LNR 890, departing runway 36 to 2400, climbing 3000. LNR 890, when I pick departure, radar identified, climb to flight level 230 and turn left direct curvy. Turn right direct curvy and climb uh, flight level 230. That's correct, and it's a left turn to Kirby. Yeah, that's correction, uh, left turn to yeah, Kirby. Okay, I turned on the MTIs on the way, uh, on the engines and the props. Prop and the Everything is working fine. Yeah. yeah. How's your wing? Clean? Very fine. Yeah, okay. Uh, still some snow on At least we're aboard. The worst yes. is done. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I left your uh, radar, uh, see. I'll leave it on. Leave it on. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. we don't see ahead. Oh, yeah. That's what we saw. 
Uh, leave it on also. Okay, good. Yeah, 10,000 after they come. Flaps and gear and lights. Make lights up. Basic on off. Pressure check and wing check. You know, if, uh, uh, starting to build up a little, little bit, bit of the bit wing. Just a little bit on my own Okay. Landing light. Retract it up. Base uh, landing. After takeoff check is complete. Check. Waypoint through Kirby. Waypoint. Track is the same. Three fifty three. Three fifty three. Check. Temperature is still uh, hot, Steve. Well, yeah, maybe I will cool put it. Put another two, three seconds of cold. Yeah. Like oh, he has a toggle switch on his side. And yes. And by that, he's moving some valves in the uh, air conditioning system, and by that, he's changing the temperature going out of the nozzle we have here. And we share the same temperature with the guys uh, back there. It's a little bit colder, though, in the front, because uh, the ducks are, are running around the, the fuselage. And the air is cooling down, so we have a supplementary uh, heating system just here, just for the cockpit, just for us. And what do you think, uh, Steve, about uh, the wing? Uh, it's starting to stick a little bit on the leading edge. Yeah. Uh, turn it on. Turn it on. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Push on. So by pushing the switch, Andre is turning on the, the wing and tail and CI system. It's basically, it's uh, just uh, like the modern jets, it just bleed air. Uh, that is uh, taken from the 14th uh, stage of the, the compressor and the air is flowing in the leading edge. You can see right now that the snow is going to melt on the leading edge. You're going to see that the white is going away slowly and uh, it's, uh, it's the icing, the leading edge of the wing, the hardboard portion, the inboard also of the engine and also the tail, the horizontal stab and the vertical stab. Uh, can you say, the, can you say yeah, the, the temperature, Steve, uh, how much uh, degrees uh, of air? Uh, what is the temperature? It's around 233. Yeah, for, uh, for the Yolo 890, contact Winnipeg Center, 1180. 1180, no, 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 890. Winnipeg Center, uh, good morning, no, 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 890. Five thousand climbing. Flight level two trees. Eleanor eight nine zero in a big center. Good morning, clear direct to Churchill. Clear uh, direct to uh, Churchill. No, 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 eight nine zero. Alpha and uh, zero zero nine. Zero zero nine. Yeah, we get colder, basically. Right. A little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Colder. Five seconds. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to undress. Okay. Five seconds. Working <laughs> speed. Check. And I don't know if you can see, guys, but uh, we have the temperature here on the yeah. uh, left wing, right wing and the tail of the, the, the section that is being the ice. So you can see that the pressure has rise to 160 on the left, 160 on the right wing, and on the tail it's about 100. As the wing is way farther on the back, it's, uh, it takes more time to heat up to uh, the correct temperature to the ice, the leading edge. So it's pretty efficient. Oh yeah. So what our dispatch uh, sends us? that the temperature is sent by the dispatch in our office in Montreal by satellite communication. Wow. It's 
pretty calm. So I will turn off the seat belt sign. Okay. So now our wing is uh, all clean. Huh? Just a little bit of snow maybe on the almost at the tip. Yes, remain, but uh, most of the wing is uh, clean. So, so uh, right now, guys, I can tell you about the icing system. So uh, oh, we're gonna keep that on. Oh yeah, a little yeah. bit more. Yeah, yeah. We, okay, good. we still have uh, good uh, the icing condition. I don't know if you can see, but uh, yeah. you have a lot of snow in the windshield, so it means that it's gonna stick back again yeah. pretty fast if we uh, if we turn it off. So we're gonna keep it on uh, for a little while. So. Uh, on my side here, I have a de-icing panel, and André has a de-icing panel on his side. On my side, it's mostly uh, uh, electrical, and on his side is, is mostly uh, the B there. Uh, but I don't know, it's, it's both of them, because I have the propeller here. All the position here is the position of a de-icing element on the propellers. The spinner, the cuffs, and also the, the inlet. Uh, those are all electrical, uh, de-icing element, electrical. And those switch here are for the engine hot air. So we, we take a bleeder also from the engine to also uh, de-ice the shroud inside the, the intake of the, uh, the engine and uh, the inlet guide vanes inside the engine, just in front of the, the compressor. So guys, uh, the first officer has just left for a little minute, a few minutes. He's been to the toilet, some uh, natural needs. So uh, as I was saying, uh, we have two uh, de-icing panel of this aircraft. Uh, the the co-pilot on his side and on my side, as the captain, I have this panel. So the engine out here is uh, to de-ice the, the shroud inside the, the cowling, inside the compressor section, and also the net guide vanes. is bleed air taken from the engine just like the, the wings and tail with this button here. And uh, to the eyes, the propeller, uh, the cuffs, the, and also the inlet, of, uh, the inlet of the engine, around the inlet, we, uh, we have uh, electrical elements. And, as, uh, and here we have a, an ammeter showing how much amperage we send to each element. We have cyclic elements and we also have steady elements. Very complicated system. And now we are almost reaching our uh, our ceiling. Uh, we are flying through flight about 220, climbing 230. So that's uh, the top ceiling of the conveyor, flight level 230. We cannot go above because of the pressurization system. We are limited to uh, uh, because we reach a cabin of almost uh, 10,000 feet uh, cabin pre pressure, equivalent pressure to the, the sea level. We, we also have like a, an icing uh, indicator here. Uh, it's supposed uh, it's not working very uh, perfectly, but uh, at some point, if we have a lot of ice, it's going to turn on. Just a little blue blue lights here, very hard to see on the annunciator panel. But uh, it's a kind of warning. Eh? Yeah, even if they were turned on, if we wouldn't notice. <laughs> yeah, we we don't wait for that to turn on before turning the anti ice. Yeah, right now it's sticking again. Just a little here, we had. Uh, uh, rime ice on the leading edge, like uh, white stuff, but now it's clear. So I'm gonna put back the wing and tail on the ice on. So you're gonna see here again, temperature is gonna rise in the left, right wing, and the tail. And flight about 230. And here we have our fancy autopilot uh, control head. So the altitude is this switch that I engage on. 
the Soto Pilot has uh, two, basically two axes. We have the we have the little uh, pitch wheels here to pitch up, pitch down the aircraft, and also we have four modes: the gyro, heading, navlock, approach. So the heading mode is coupled with our GPS with that switch here. So heading, GPS, and with that switch here, we uh, we either select uh, the heading mode. So the GPS is going to drive our autopilot. And if we put to VOR here, uh, we're going to um, tell the aircraft to turn. We're going to lead the aircraft with the heading bug on our HSI here, on the left or on the right. So right now, I just engage the autopilot. I'm letting the aircraft uh, accelerate until I reach the cruising speed. And at this point, I will uh, trim the aircraft again. As uh, as we told earlier, it's a very old aircraft, uh, 62 years old, so uh, it has to be trimmed uh, in every phase of flight. Uh, in the climb, I've been trimming it. In the cli uh, once we reach the cruising speed at the cruising altitude with the autopilot engage, I'm going to trim again also the aircraft using uh, uh, the pitch, uh, the, the, ru the rudder, I mean the, the rudder trim, and also the road trim. Okay, I'm back, uh, Steve. Thank you. Nothing new on the comms. Uh, okay. So you have one and two. Leveling off uh, flight level three, two, three zero. Yep. On I didn't. Right. Uh, I didn't record the time and the, the fuel. A top of that climb. Reason. And also the put the the T gas and the neutral. Place. Neutral. Place. Okay. Can you tell me the, the cruising speed? The cruising speed today is uh, one ninety three. Alright, thanks. And, and uh, I just turned on also the uh, the wing and tail and CIs because pull, uh, pull up. No, no, no. I no. just turned it on. Uh, okay, good. Yeah. And uh, top of climb, approximately uh, one four, one eight. Yeah, well, just one minute ago. So oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah well, twenty. Okay, so fuel is uh, just a little bit less of eight thousand. Right now it's very hard to accelerate because we are take, taking a lot of uh, bleed air from the engine, so we don't have much power. We, we have uh, 174 uh, speed and our maximum continuous uh, power on the engines are 932 TIT. Right now we have uh, 930, 915 as you see, and it means that we have 16 uh, HP of torque on the left and on the right. When we uh, pull out the, the wing and tenancy ice, you're going to see uh, the temperature is going to change for sure, it's going to go uh, down and uh, we will get more torque also. Usually in cruise, we, our target, no NCIs, is 847 TIT and uh, which, uh, whatever the torques we have. So we fly this aircraft on torque. We always uh, fly, try to fly with uh, even torque, so that's why I have a difference between both TITs. Okay, we are not in that much icing condition yet, so, uh, again, so uh, you can pull out the wing and tail. Pull out, yeah. So just watch, the TIT is, is going to go down, and the torque is going to raise. You see, we've gained uh, around uh, 150, maybe 130 torque, and we are also saving fuel. Right, uh, you, maybe I didn't uh, point a little earlier, but the, the fuel flow has have changed also. Okay, and now outside, uh, uh, we are clear out of the clouds, so I'm going to turn off also the engine NCIs. So again, the TIT is going to change. Just leave the time to the valves to close. And the TIT and the torque is going to raise also. And our speed, uh, we are now increasing the speed. So our target is 193. Well, once I reach 193 uh, of, of the speed and together, I'm going to lower the TIT to 847 and trim the aircraft and thereafter we will have coffee yes yes yes, yes. so i'm gonna get disconnect the autopilot with the switch just here on my left hand i disconnect and then i trim the aircraft first i bring the ball to the center on the adi and then i tr i trim the the aileron lnr 890 contact one big center now one three two eight two thirty two eighty two lnr 890 Winnipeg Center, good morning, LNR 890. Wiggling off at uh, first of all, 230 direct uh, church. LNR 890, So right now my aircraft is trimmed, the ball is in the center, the wings are 
You see, it's flying uh, by itself and the autopilot is off. The pilot we engage, I'll check. Go. And that's the most efficient uh, we can get for uh, cruising uh, while we cruise. For the fuel economy, the aircraft is not fighting against itself, the pilot is not fighting against the, the, the controls. And now we are direct to Churchill. Time to have a coffee. Cheers. Cheers, Captain. <laughs> Cheers, Cheers guys. Cool. And now we have selected uh, Thompson VR, 12 and 9. Uh, how far are we from Thompson? Yeah. Manitoba is uh, yeah, very, a great, uh, uh, it's not very populated uh, province in Canada. So uh, I think it's mostly the biggest uh, city on our way. You can see that's our route of flight. We are uh, from Winnipeg. There we are, just above a uh, magnificent and huge uh, Lake Winnipeg, which we can uh, we cannot see unfortunately. It's all cloudy uh, down there. And Thompson is just here, Yankee Tango Hotel. That's uh, the biggest uh, city in the northern Manitoba. I think it's home to 13,000 people, and uh, it, there's a big mine there. So we just selected the VOR, and uh, when we reach about uh, 150 miles back of uh, Thompson, uh, we're gonna see here uh, the display of the DME in nautical miles. Our distance from uh, of uh, Thompson, and also the, the needles of the VORs here are gonna point straight to uh, Thompson. Can you unlock my seatbelt, please, Aisa? <laughs> Thank you very much. The rain is good, amazing. Can you tell us, uh, tell me the distance from Thompson? From the Thompson? GPS? Yeah. Okay, so we are 212 miles back of Thompson. So when we reach about uh, 150, maybe 140 miles, uh, we will have a display on our VORs and DMEs. Okay, back to Sperna 5, please. Bye. When we are in Thompson, that's where um, well, the road continues to, till Gelam. Gelam is a much smaller town. I think uh, the, that's mostly the installation of uh, Hydro Manitoba when they have uh, the, the dams where they, uh, they produce the electricity for Manitoba province. And thereafter, I think uh, that the road stops there mainly. And thereafter, Churchill is uh, up there. And the only link between uh, Thompson and Churchill is a railway, so uh, that's the main link uh, between uh, this town and uh, the rest of the world. You also, uh, it's also uh, accessible by maritimely, maritime, I don't know, by boats, going all, all the way around Quebec till uh, they reach Churchill here in the Hudson Bay. And there's the air link for sure. So as we spoke uh, yesterday, that's the polar bear season. That's the big uh, rush for Churchill uh, during the whole year. I think that's a big rush, uh, big rushy season. It lasts about two months, and uh, people from all over the world are coming to uh, to see the polar bears. Europeans, uh, Asians, uh, people from all over the world, Americans. Usually, I think the population of uh, Churchill is about 500 people. It must be like a two or three times the population of uh, usual, usually. Where, uh, at uh, Churchill? Yeah, right oh, now, because so, of yeah. the polar bear season. Around that, yeah. People are coming by railway, it's, yeah. uh, it's much cheaper. Uh, it's good and, rate, yeah. uh, by plane, so uh, we are flying uh, most uh, every two days, maybe sometimes every day. So, uh, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, it's pretty buzzy, bringing uh, like a uh, uh, with a conveyor, we can bring as much as 50 people, and uh, we also have a 737 that's going to come um, tomorrow. Eh? 
yeah. for a flight Saturday and uh, they can bring as much as uh, 120 people so uh, a lot of people are coming in yeah. uh, it used to be a big town church and it used to uh, house to be the home of about 10,000 people I think in the days of the Cold War it was a, a strategic uh, base for uh, the Americans they built a base there it was called Fort Churchill and they had um, a squadron I'm not sure what way it was I think it was a strategic air command so it must, uh, must have been uh, bombers maybe fighters I'm not sure it was uh, to uh, well, scare the Russians probably and uh, so they had a big base there with a radar station and a big supply that's why there, there's such a, a big runway over there it's about uh, uh, I'm gonna show you here so you have a runway of 9,200 feet and a small one, a small gravel one, 4,000 feet. Uh, so the main runway, which we use today, we're going to use today because the other one is closed, is uh, this one, 9,200 feet. And you have the terminal here. We have the fuel quantity here in thousands of pounds. So we have uh, around 3,800 on the left, 3,600 on the right. We have the flap and skater here. You're going to see in action uh, on the landing and maybe you've seen on the takeoff too. Uh, we have the altitude management system. Here we put the, our uh, target altitude all the time. Every time the ATC um, gives, us, uh, uh, gives us an altitude to follow, we put it here and uh, it's gonna warn us if, uh, if we are not able to hold it for any reason. If we miss the altitude, it's gonna flash, it's gonna ring and it's gonna tell us. We have our standby horizon here and our main horizon here, here. and th those are the basic uh, flight instruments. Uh, as most of you must probably know, the ADI, the HSI, the altitude, the VSI, uh, which incorporate the, the TCAS. If we have a, a traffic, maybe we will see later in the Churchill area, there's a few helicopters always flying people around to see the bears. We're going to have a display of uh, the traffic, uh, the other airplanes, uh, helicopters, whatever, have a transponder on board. And uh, we have the RMI here. And the, the both needles are pointing now on the VORs, and I can select the small needle, either VOR or ADF here, with, the, with that switch. As you may have noticed, uh, we have two power levers. Those are mine, those are Andre's uh, power lever. We don't have pitch or mixture for sure because it's a jet engine, but uh, most of the time uh, you're going to have a pitch, but this aircraft is automatic, the propeller. Uh, by that we just send uh, with those power levers we just send more fuel to the FCU and the propeller regulates uh, itself. It's, he has a target to keep 13,820 RPMs and that's his goal. Uh, so we just add power, the torque is, is going to rise and the RPM is going to stay the same because the, uh, the propeller uh, is hydraulically governed and it's going to keep it's a hydrostatic, I think the proper the name, the proper name, and it's gonna keep always the same RPM in flight. On the ground, is different. It's very complicated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Different, yeah. Yeah. Very and uh, so we here we have our that's all mostly our radio panel here. It's a bit of a mess. So we have about that. We have our phones. They did they didn't design the the cockpits in the old days for our iPhone. They didn't expect that to come. So we have the the control head for the autopilot, the frequency for the VORs. Uh, here we have the hydraulic also. We have uh, three hydraulic pumps on this aircraft. That's the emergency DC powered hydraulic pump, which we use on the ground or in case of emergency, but we mainly use it on the ground. In the air, we never use it. We have the AC hydraulic pump, which we use on takeoff and landing. It's gonna turn on the hydraulic pump here. Maybe you can see the light is on, but in cruise, we don't use it because this aircraft doesn't have much uh, hydraulic system and uh, the third hydraulic pump is located in the left engine it's an accessory always driven by the engine so we always have hydraulic pressure which you can see here 3000 psi as long as the left engine is running we're gonna have always hydraulic pressure so AC pump is mostly to add flow when we need more hydraulic and it's also uh, our main backup if the left the left-hand hydraulic pump fail, or the left-hand engine fail, and we don't have the left-hand engine uh, running to uh, supply hydraulic pressure to, uh, to our systems. So, yeah, we use it on takeoff, landing, mainly. And it's, uh, it's uh, powered by AC power, by our AC power here, which is only, only on when we have the both engine in high speed. As I spoke earlier, we have uh, two speeds on those engines, low speed and high speed. 
low speed is uh, 10,150 RPM and high speed is uh, 20,820 RPM. Uh, once, we are about, uh, once we are about to take off, as you notice on the ground, we are upshifting engine. Upshifting means we are bringing to the high speed. Then the AC power turns on. We confirm before taking off that the AC alternators are on. We have the power here. And then our AC pump is running because we have AC power. Otherwise, it's not running, even if the switch is on. And uh, down here, yeah, uh, we have the bypass here. Uh, most of the systems are, um, are off when the hydraulic bypass is uh, up. And every, every system are, are pressurized when the bypass is down. In flight, it's up. Uh, I think the only systems that are still powered by the bypass when it's in up position, maybe the wipers, I think the one L door, the main door, and the flaps. I think we have two or three systems. I'm not sure anymore. But uh, when the bypass is up, and we can also use the DC pump to operate the, the, those uh, those systems, and also the brakes. Actually, I'm gonna have to check again. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a good uh, review. Yeah, and uh, what is hydraulically uh, uh, hydraulically uh, operate uh, on this uh, aircraft? Are the wipers, as I mentioned yesterday on the run-up. Uh, we have the flaps here. We have uh, Lenegear. Yeah, Lenegear for sure. Yeah. A friend of us, 950. We have the, the one L door. When we close it, we, we use the DC pump here on the ground because we don't have AC power and the engine is not running. So we have to use the DC pump. Uh, the brakes. The teller for the, the teller direction. For yeah, the teller. And that's it. So no flight controls. Flight controls is all uh, by hand. And we have uh, servo tabs to help us because it's uh, quite a big aircraft. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, and uh, so unlike many of the big aircraft, uh, no hydraulic on the uh, on the on the flight controls. I know. And as I uh, mentioned earlier, as we don't have pitch uh, pitch lever to control the RPM of our uh, propellers, uh, how can we adjust the, the RPM so we don't have the, the waving between the props? We don't have unbalance and we don't hear that wow, wow, wow all the time. We have an uh, automatic synchronizing system here. We have five positions, off, standby, sync, center, sync, and facing. So in three of those positions, propellers are going to be sync. And if we have any issues, because the system is really complicated and uh, sometimes some elements won't work, then we can retrograde to, uh, we can turn back this knob to other position to try to find out the best position for, uh, to, uh, to try to synchronize the, the propeller speed of both uh, propellers. Because it's very annoying. As you've seen, the, those uh, propellers, they are very big, so they make a lot of noise in, in flight. So that's why, uh, we really love that system and when it's working. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, it's noisy. Yeah. So we're still 50 minutes away from Churchill. Okay. Ah, we have a good uh, cruising speed of 333 knots here. Oh yes. So it means uh, we have 60 knots of uh, wind in the tail. We have a good jet today. On the way up, it means we're gonna have a good jet on the way back in the front. Oh <laughs> yes, I'm sure. Yeah. So we, we are expecting one hour 45 minutes uh, north, and on the way back we are expecting two hours 30 minutes because of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a hell of a ride. That's Jean-Claude. Oh, you one recognize the voice? Yeah. One of the oldest pilots on the, on the Nolinor uh, fleet. He's been uh, with us for maybe 14 years, I'm not sure. He's flying the 737 today to the mine up north. Yeah. Uh, 
And so we are, we are going here, Churchill, and Jean Claude is flying here. That's uh, Meadowbank. It's uh, basically like a right in the middle of Canada, north of Baker Lake. Baker Lake is a Inuit community, and he's flying. Um, it's about 50, 60 miles uh, north of Baker Lake, I think. Uh, the last element that remain on the hydraulic system, just final, is the ground blower. Oh yes, yeah, yeah the ground blower. Part, part of the um, the fancy. Uh, uh, air uh, pressurization system. Just uh, on the ground, it's, uh, it supplies air to the heat exchanger, so uh, it's mainly used in summer. In summer, the heat exchanger is going to cool down the air coming inside the cabin to, uh, yeah, so, so the, the air coming out of the, yes. from the, the ground blower is not too hot because it's pressurized air coming out of the, the right engine. The, uh, the engine driven compressor as we spoke yesterday and uh, it's pressurized here to pressurize the cabin and uh, you have here that's a nice uh, air conditioning system air is flowing all the way you have the heat exchanger first secondary here and water separator and you have a ground blower which is here hydraulically operated very complicated system. <laughs> it relies a lot of you on humans to, to work out. It cannot work by itself. <laughs> yes. Andre always have to uh, to trim hot and cold, hot and cold. Yeah, we have to time. check the temperature here with her hand. Too cold, too hot. Okay, uh, let's put ah, a it's, it's nice. Ah, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah it's perfect. Yeah. If it's too cold, Andre put a little bit of hot. Yeah. We wait till the till all the valves. One valve here. Uh, I mean, one valve here and one valve here. Change position. And then we have a heat cabin heater in here with the AC elements. That's going to work for sure if we have AC power. If we have AC power, the 12 elements are going to turn on one after the other. And we're going to have supplementary heat going flowing inside the cabin. And we also have a DC heater here, only for the cockpit, only for our luxury. Yes. If uh, the hair is still going out too <laughs> cold here, we can add uh, heat with that. And we have a small blower here to have more hair in the cockpit. Something tricky also with the conveyors are the radios. Oh, yeah. yeah. On the ray, is, uh, you have all your volumes at the minimum, I uh, think. Yes, yes. And uh, it's screaming into your ears. Oh, yeah. Mine are all at the max and are barely here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, nice, funny. Yeah, it's always complicated. Always, always a fight between me and Andre. <laughs> yeah. I don't hear anything. Oh, it's too loud. Too loud, yeah. yeah it's always complicated <laughs> yes. to get along with that. Yeah. Yeah, the 950 is going to Churchill, not going to Meadowbank. So our friends on the 737, they are going to Churchill to refuel because they, they could not make it today uh, out of Valdor direct to the mines. So they, they make a fuel stop in the Churchill. So uh, if we are lucky, we're going to see them. We are expecting uh, maybe Churchill in about 40 minutes. Oh, they, they'll probably be gone already unless uh, it's complicated over there. We're gonna do the. We are. We're gonna start the descent shortly. So I'm gonna brief the approach. Uh, so we take our iPad. Uh, we're gonna take. Uh, we're gonna have an hour and a half approach on way 33 in Churchill. The plate is effective uh, March uh, 22, 2019. Uh, the 100 nautical mile. Uh, how's the uh, temperature? Temperature is minus. Uh, is minus one. Huh? We, so we don't have to correct the, for the the elevation. When it's very minus cold, one. we have to correct the altitude. Yeah, minus, the minus one, one, it's not necessary. So, one of the let's come by 2300, the MSA 1400. So, uh, we will be proceeding through SIC. Through SIC is a waypoint. I'm, gonna, I'm planning, expecting uh, through SIC at 3000 feet. And then, in Migo, we're going to check at 1400. Minimum descent altitude is going to be uh, 480 barrel meter. 
So currently approaching minimum, minimum. I can't landing on the other. In case of misapproach, we'll climb uh, 1,400 track 335 to exhibit as we go shuttle climb. Once on the ground, uh, we will taxi out on Alpha 8.1 and uh, our uh, linemen, uh, our legendary linemen of Churchill, <laughs> yes, Bob, yeah, it's Bob. Bob uh, will be there uh, yeah. waiting for us and he's going to march on us. In, in All right, good. And uh, we're going to land at uh, 51,000 pounds. It's going to be a pairing of uh, flaps 20, uh, 17 and 28. So the speed are going to be 154, 130. And uh, we have Gus huh, over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 25. it's going to be uh, 121. Our reference speed uh, for the approach, 121 knots, 106 for the touchdown. Check. So the approach procedure in Osama is brief. Special approach procedure is brief. The approach lights. Uh, I, uh, we don't I have like Papi, we only no. have uh, high attention light, like SSILR. So uh, we will uh, follow the glide path here generated on the, uh, the approach. Yes. By the iPad. CDA procedure, so we're going to follow as I just mentioned. Yep. Flaps uh, 1728, the speed is already brief. Uh, probably NCI is to go through the, uh, the cloud layers, but uh, down there we see that it's, it's pretty clean, so it's going to be mostly visual. Uh, the MEL, so we're going to make sure that we don't go over the barber pole here. That's yeah. that's our limit speed because uh, we don't have, uh, today we have uh, our back, uh, our over speed warning that is MEL. So we just have to make sure that we don't go above the barber pole, which is on our only education of the speed, over speed, over speed, speed. <laughs> yeah. Next, we're on the condition, uh, we, we, the dispatch just told us that it's pretty good. Taxi route, it's brief, and it's yes. of arrival. Uh, we're going to have a uh, to do a 26.7 for the VFR's traffic in the area. Yep. And uh, call to Bob on the, our, fr our frequency. So I'll do the PA. You have one and two? Yeah, I have one and two. Yeah, the weather is here? Yes. Um, no, it's over here. It's going to be fine this one. Ladies and gentlemen, from Flight Deck, your captain speaking. We'll be starting our descent shortly for uh, Churchill Airport. Um, temperature on the ground is uh, about uh, one degree, so uh, same temperature as uh, Winnipeg, but uh, same strong winds uh, from the west, about uh, for, uh, 30 40 kilometers of wind west, and uh, cloud condition is uh, no, it's mostly uh, clear sky, but uh, no precipitation, so it's going to be uh, better weather than uh, Winnipeg, and uh, it's made landing in about a little less than 20 minutes. Yeah, from the aviation and from Cheers North, it's been a pleasure having you on board, and uh, we wish you a pleasant trip in the uh, church. End. Back on one and two. Okay, no change, you see. This and checklist? This and checklist. Okay, you like quantity. Quantity is checked, pressure check. Emergency air pressure check. Cabin pressure panels is set. Time trim is a lock. Approach briefing complete. And performance review. This and checklist complete. So I'm going to start the descent about, uh, we have a great speed, so yeah, uh, in about four miles, we'll start the descent right, almost uh, right away. We put all the T-Cases already in below, great. Yep. And uh, we lock the trim, that's the TD system, uh, We on this aircraft you have like two, uh, uh, two fuel management systems. You have the FCU, which is the basic of uh, any turbine engine, and you have the TD, the temperature datum valve. Which uh, is gonna is gonna fine tune, let's say, our fuel to uh, the engine because the FCU is not uh, precise enough. So uh, every po lever, power lever position is associated with the temperature, and that's the TD valve that controls it. And when we go a certain uh, below a certain position of the power lever, uh, the TD system uh, change uh, its uh, mode of operation, and it's gonna make the engine fluctuate a lot. So that's why we lock the, the trim, the temperature data valve at a certain position with that switch. But upon landing, we will cap it down. It's just for um, more comfort and uh, yeah. more precise during the descent. More precision of the power level during the descent. Okay. All right, good. Perfect center, no, no, 890, ready to lower. Eight nine zero to six thousand. Report leaving one two thousand. Churchill altimeter three zero two three. Clear to four four six thousand. Report at one two thousand, and we expect uh, iron out of the runway to the Pacific. Eight nine zero eight nine zero clear direct Pacific. Clear direct Pacific. Eight nine zero. Okay, 
6,000 and report 1, 2,000. Yes, sir. 6,000. Is it right, Lucy? And it's right, Lucy. Is it right? Comfort, comfort. Of course. Is it right, Lucy? How's the procedure? Down. Ooh, just got a bump. One twenty six seven. Okay, yeah, can do the twenty six seven right away. I'm gonna pick a uh, kick number one. Okay, check. I'm gonna put the signal side. Fifteen minutes. Oh, Fifteen minutes yeah. from uh, wow. for lap. Yep. Fifteen minutes for lap. Thirteen speed. Check. So with Zach Pusik is uh, expecting Pusik three thousand feet seventeen. Uh, so we should uh, be fifty one back. We are fifty three. That's good. That's good. Okay. Pusik Jean is coming down. Yeah, so then let's start at 700 feet per yeah, or something like that. Yeah. So Andre is also controlling the rate of the uh, the precipitation that change. So uh, I don't know if you can see, but there's a vario down there. That's the vario of the cabin. Now it's a negative, so the cabin is going down with us. We are going down at 1,500 feet, and the cabin is barely 400 maybe. Yeah. Our target is to reach uh, 700. Sometimes it's a bit long. The yeah. system is very slow. It's all pneumatic. All lines go going through the aircraft. And it has a slow uh, reaction time. Yeah, the weather is, is good here, but uh, I think it should. Oh, but yeah, but it is a little bit straighter. So yeah, it should be almost uh, there. Yeah. Oh, it's not so bad. <coughs> we can see a uh, marvelous uh, Churchill River here, flowing straight to Churchill. Two thousand one hundred. Yeah. Check. As you can see, I'm going straight to the barber pole in the descent of speed, and uh, I see this last one thousand one thousand seven hundred four hundred feet. And we are going to Krusik, the first waypoint on our air nav approach for when we treat. Twenty-six. Right now. Okay. okay he'll probably uh, won't speak back. Maybe he's gonna hear you, but he won't be able to talk back. So just tell him we're gonna be landing in, a, uh, well, in a tw thirteen minutes. Thirteen minutes. Okay. It's gone. I'm gone. Say, uh, what's call call sign? It's above the radio. I'm splitting to sick in uh, seven minutes. Back, back on VHF. Uh, but nothing new. He, uh, he just asked us for our estimate for the sick the first way. Can you reduce the range to 40 miles, please? Or uh, maybe even uh, 20 miles. Let's be crazy. 40 miles. Exact. The rain is so good. Huh? It was good. Uh, up there, the troops were. I'll check, check. Yeah. check again. Check again. Five. And we're going to get it. Yeah, we're going to get it. Winnipeg Center, no, no, 8-9, so we're leaving.
For the approach? Yes, and okay. we can change uh, the frequency in 269. No, okay. So oh, it's done. Okay, okay so done. Uh, yeah. could be the 100 that's come by for uh, Alcy, 2300, please. Lights out. Rolling no light pass, and you see pump. No, no, green light. Optimator. There's a uh, 3023, but uh, 9,000 Check away, see bell sign. He's on. Adam. To go. To go. Now it's on. Now it's on. I'll check this one. Check. The 737 is about to take off. Uh, we don't have the runway side. Once we get through the clouds, it's there. Temperature is below zero. That's the ice on as we are coming in the clouds. Yeah, so. Roger, runway 33, wind 270 at 13 
adjusting 19, altimeter 3023. 3023, not an option. Can you turn down the heat a little bit, please? Yeah, actually. Yeah, I think it's in a 5 second. Uh, it's spoiling. It's coming. Yeah. We can put the MSA 1400 feet and I'm yep. down to 3000. Check. 1400. One pointer, track 335. Why? Five disconnect, I'll take it Check. back. Check. It's going to be a short track. So after reducing the torque to the minimum, and then we'll uh, put the gear down and the flaps as soon as we have this one. We need uh, maximum speed 173 knots to get the gear down. And uh, then the flaps is 160, 156, depending on the, the position. So we have the runway inside right in front of us, and Churchill Town is a little bit on the left there. Okay, 73, okay, here we go. You're down. You're down, and one of the uh, Very like that. Good, flap 17, you'll see the flaps going down flap here. 17. The gauge is there. I'm going to keep a speed of at least 130 knots until uh, while we have 17 degrees of flaps. And uh, I will put and I'm uh, extending the also the landing light and the taxi light. Yeah, we'll put the switch in the Yeah, 1400, that's for your version. That's a good one. Okay, check. See when Andre capped the temperature switch, the temperature lights went on, and now the, the TD valve is uh, in another mode, so it's not uh, it's not working. Uh, we're gonna have more spit on our power levers. We should, but it's very fine. Yeah. Get the new one thousand four hundred. Yeah. Okay. And reaching the flaps. Flaps. Uh, final flaps. Flaps, flaps twenty eight degrees and uh, landing checkers. Here we go. One thousand four hundred. Maybe fifty feet above the ground. Okay. Check. Twenty eight. Let me check the sink and set and temperature. Is the center and cap. Uh, wing and tail on the ice. It's uh, pull out and it's off on my side too. And gear, nose wheel. We have uh, four green lights for the AC pump and the three landing gears, uh, down and luck. And it's center on my side of the tunnel. Okay, flaps. Flaps uh, 28, confirm. Landing checklist complete. Check. So I'm, uh, I'm going to target uh, 121 for the speed and 106 on the, or over the threshold.
so we have a strong left crosswind today. About the 16 goes to 28, I think. Can you ask him a wind check? Just tell him a wind check. And Churchill, are you in Eleanor 890? Can we have uh, the wind check, please? Eleanor 890, Roger. Wind 270 at 12, casting 17. Eleanor 890, thank you. Oh, so that's fine. still in high speed. When we reach 35 knots here, we're going to lower the speed to 10,100 RPMs with the two bottoms here. Nice. Oh, you're yes, too sweet sir. with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nice. You never say that. <laughs> First time you say that. Guard number two. Be stable. One. Engine stable. Roger. So when I'm downshifting, Andre is guarding the emergency handle. If the RPM goes below 9,900 RPM, he pulls him. Because uh, otherwise we might burn the engine. Because the bleed valves are still going to be open. And, uh, and there, there's not going to be enough air to cool the, uh, the engine. And if it's not supposed to go below 9,900. If it goes that, uh, that low, it, something's wrong, so we don't take any chance, we pull the other. At this point, it's no big deal if we end on an engine. No. The day is over. Yeah. 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 <laughs> big in, yes. Yeah. And we go to the hotel. Ciao, Mesa. <laughs> no, it's not true. We'll help. Churchill, really. Above inside. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have 2008 on PSI. Roger. Parking brake set, uh, shut down. Shut down. Stand by. Cabin pressure panel, seat brake on. Parking brake set. RPM. Nope. NTS test. On. Fuel and ignition. Off. Parking brake. Reset. NTS test. Is up. Spell sign. Off. See you guys. See you later. Peter E. Cockpit eater. Is uh, off. Uh, GPI, stand by horizon. Off, off. Okay, inverter. Soon off, we are waiting 2200 RPM. And now it's off. Beacon lights off and emergency light disarm. Shutdown checklist complete. Roger. Good for the door. Okay, let's go on to it.
And now the flight attendant is opening the door and uh, the passengers uh, are going to be uh, released. Ok, fuel remain uh, un petit peu plus que 5000. So thank you guys. It's been a pleasure uh, having yeah, you on board. Eclipse fan. Bye bye. Bye bye. So Eric's fan, uh, that's it. Welcome to Churchill, yes. Manitoba. Uh, hope you enjoyed the flight, and uh, we would like your. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Yes, <laughs> we we are very glad to be with you for the, this flight uh, to Churchill. No, 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 eight nine one. Yeah, eight nine zero. Sorry. Farewell. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Bye bye.